Let's go over the top five worst things that I found about Sweden. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Will and I moved to Sweden just over a year ago. And there have been some instances where I've just missed home that little bit more. If you're planning to move to Sweden, you should certainly know these five things. Now, starting off at number five is that there's no corner stores. There's nowhere that you can go late at night to go get a snack or if you want alcohol, you can't just go to a bottle shop. There's certainly no 24 hour bottle shops. They've only got one thing and it's regulated. It's called Systembolaget and it is their bottle shop. It's owned by the government and it's run by them too. Now, Swedes love it to the most part because the people that work there know what they're talking about. They're extremely well trained. They know what kind of wine goes with what kind of food. They know their rum, their whiskey, their scotch, their vodkas. They know it all. So it is fantastic in that regard. But the fact that they're closed on Sundays and in the evenings, they close usually around six o'clock. Some of them are open till 8 p.m. But just something to keep in mind. If you're gonna have a party or if you're gonna have Sunday drinks, you need to plan for it ahead. Now, number four on the list is probably the thing that hurts me the most, which is the cost of petrol in Sweden. Now, everything is so well spread out and it's fantastic for the fact that there's not much traffic, but it means it takes quite a bit of distance to get to the next town. Now, that's a hassle because petrol is around two euro 50 at the moment. I'm seeing all my friends back in Australia complain because petrol is at a euro 40, which is very expensive for Australia. But if that was the case in Sweden, I think everyone would just be loving it. All right, well, the sun is starting to go down now, so we have to smash through these last three. And coming in at number three is also one of the best things about Sweden, and it's the fact that everyone speaks English. Now, this is a problem, though, if you're moving to the country, such as I did, it's been really hard to converse with people in Swedish and get to know the Swedish language. So that is kind of a bad thing as well. So it's great in the fact that if I walk into a shop, I can ask for anything that I want because 89% of the population speaks English pretty much fluently. Now, number two is something to me that I still struggle to get my head around, and it's the housing market when it comes to rentals. It's such an odd system. It's not something I've seen before. In Australia, if you want an apartment or a house to rent, you just go to an open for inspection, you usually set a certain time on the weekday or weekend to go have a look at it. You go have a look. If you like it, you apply for it. If your application gets approved, you can move straight in. But Sweden is not like that. Josie, do you want to come in and tell people a little bit about how this works come on come on in Hello. <laughs> all right so the way that it works in Sweden is that companies own a lot of property uh, a lot of apartments and they have a queue system so you sign up to be in the queue and then for every day that you're a member you get points and then when you've collected enough points you can apply for an apartment what bro what are you talking about man it's not the best system I don't like it so what, how do you get points well, you go on to their website and you become a member, you sign up. Some are free and some cost money annually. And then for every day you get one point. So I have been signed up for one of them since I was 18. I am now 26 and I would still probably not be first in line to some of these apartments. Yeah. Because a lot of parents, they sign their kids up when they're born. I prefer the Australian way of renting an apartment or a house. I think it's much quiet. <laughs> I think it's much better in Australia the way that we do it. I think it's a lot easier. Mm. You can rent privately. It's not as common, but you can do it. My second apartment was privately owned, so I rented it from a private person. Okay. All right, that's enough of you, Josie. Get out okay. of here. Bye-bye. We're on to number one on the list. Just in time for the sun to go down here, which is fantastic because it ties in to the number one slot. And that is that the sun goes down so early in winter and the weather in winter is cold. Now, as you would probably be aware, in Sweden, it snows, it gets that cold, but coming from Melbourne, Australia, where, you know, the coldest is kind of minus one, minus two in the middle of winter at two o'clock in the morning. But apart from that, it never gets below zero. So to come to Sweden and find that it's minus 10 just blew my mind. Even though I expected it, I just didn't expect it to be that cold. Now, it's not all doom and gloom in Sweden. It certainly isn't. It's a beautiful country full of beautiful people. So check out this top five up here for the top five best things that I've found about Sweden. 